Hi, I'm Bill Kinney, and this is the 14th video of a series about complex arithmetic methods and geometric interpretations. We're continuing with our arithmetic in terms of thinking about moduli and arguments of complex numbers and how they are related. And in the last video, we looked at the polar form of a complex number using trigonometry. If you've got a complex number written in the form x plus i y, you can use trigonometry polar coordinates essentially to rewrite that, replace the x with r cos theta, replace the y with r sine theta, where r really is the distance between the complex number and the origin, its modulus, and theta is the angle or an angle that the complex number makes with the positive real axis. More, pre more precisely, the vector going from the origin to the complex number mixed with the positive real axis. It's the argument of the complex number, and you've got the polar form. Turns out to be a good idea to think about this another way. Factor the r out like this. And then to save some writing, replace this expression, cos theta plus i sine theta, with something simpler and sometimes it's replaced with the following CIS theta or CIS of theta for short so anytime you see CIS of theta in math it's shorthand for cosine theta plus I sine theta it is a CIS function we're plugging a real number into the CIS function and getting in a complex number out cosine theta plus I sine theta and what we saw in the last video and what I'm going to write down now in symbols is that even a complicated multiplication like this involving roots can sometimes be simpler to think about in terms of polar coordinates. So we saw that the answer could look like this, but we also saw that the answer in polar coordinates uh, could look like this right here. And I don't want to enable my dynamics. It could look like this here. All right. Can we write that? That's a particular example. Can we write down a general formula for what I'm talking about here? Yes, you can, and it's going to be easiest to write in terms of this cis symbol. So let's go ahead and write it. The first complex number we're going to represent in polar coordinates as this product r times cis theta with a subscript of 1. Didn't want to do that. There we go. Subscript of 1 for both r and theta. Think of this as representing z1. Let's go ahead and call it z1 here. So I've got a complex number z1 represented in this polar form and another complex number z2 represented in this polar form. What's the polar form of the product? Z1 times Z2. We can use the ideas up here to write the polar form of the product. You multiply the moduli. The modulus of Z1 is R1. And the modulus of Z2 is R2. And you add the arguments. We're using theta 1 for the argument of z1 and theta 2 for the argument of z2. So this formula right here, based on defining this quantity cis to be cosine theta plus i sine theta, this formula is one way to represent complex number multiplication in polar coordinates. There's actually a second way that's actually even more common but I want to show you this form initially. As far as complex number division, as long as z2 is not 0, so you're not dividing by 0, and that will imply r2 is not 0, you 
you need to divide the moduli and you need to subtract the arguments. So as long as z2 is not 0, which will imply r2 is not 0, then we can do this division in polar coordinates this way. What is this other alternative form of this that I was hinting at that is more common? Well, without going into why at the moment, it's in the Sapp and Snyder book in section 1.4, if you are interested at the moment. Without going into why, I want to write down one of the most famous formulas in math. It's one of Euler's many formulas that he has named after him, and I want to get this to look a certain way. Here we go. One of Euler's formulas. He has many formulas named after him, actually. This is one of his more famous ones. E, and that is the number E, raised to the i times theta power, where here, at least initially, theta is real, ends up equaling cosine of theta plus i sine theta. Euler's formula. One of the most important formulas in all of math right here. How is it proved in section 1.4, assuming you understand infinite series and their convergence, and in particular the Taylor series of e to a power, cosine of some number, and sine of some number, you can do a formal derivation of this formula using infinite series, using Taylor series. If you assume that the Taylor series expansions are valid, in particular the one for e to a power, is being valid when the power is i, the imaginary unit, times some real number. Doesn't provide a whole lot of insight into intuitively why it's true, but it does, when you accept the series definitions, it does prove it to be true when you also have some theorems with, about convergence of series as well and rearrangements of terms. Anyway, what I want to finish this video off with is just the realization that you can rewrite these two formulas in this alternative notation. In fact, the cis gets replaced with e to this power. So you can represent z1 as r1 e to the i theta 1, and z2 is r2 times e to the i theta 2, and then z1 times z2 will be r1 times r2 times e to the i theta 1 plus theta 2. And for quotients, z1 divided by z2 You'll get a division of the moduli and a subtraction of the arguments. This is actually the more common way to write these polar coordinate formulas um, than the cis formulas. But initially, we think of it in terms of cis, and that's what the book does. But ultimately, we'll think of it in terms of powers of E.